morning. Happy Wednesday. I just went to CrossFit. I saved you guys the pleasure of seeing me super crusty at four in the morning this morning when I did the vlog. So it is Wednesday. Welcome to the vlog. I am parked. I'm ready to walk into work. I figured I'm going to take you on a little Wednesday day in my life. Um, today should be a good day. I have no swallow studies, which is insane because I had three on Friday, three yesterday, and three on Monday. So I am very looking forward to having a day without any swallow studies and just seeing patients clinically. And then our, we don't have any availability in radiology today. It's all booked up. So um, I'll just pre-schedule some for tomorrow and Friday if need be. But I'm super excited to see my friend today. Christina comes in town and I haven't seen her in like three months. I don't, I don't remember the last time that we've gone this long without seeing each other. So Christina, I'm so excited to see you after work. I gotta dry shampoo my hair and go to work. See you on the flip side. Adulting 101 is bringing your umbrella with you to work because you get out of work. I live in Florida and it typically ever rains every afternoon. We done did Wednesday. Wednesday is done. Welcome to my crazy car. It's about 3.45 and I'm leaving work. I was supposed to try to leave at three today and that didn't happen, so here we are. We had a like PTOT speech therapy, whole therapy squad meeting um, with all the therapists in the rehab department, um, all met up, like HR put it on. So it was like a meeting to update us on just changes to the hospital and things that are impact the therapy team. My car is insane right now because I'm going to Goodwill and doing another drop off. But today was a good day. It was a lot more chill than the last couple times I've been at work. Um, I just did a lot of follow-ups today. I only had one eval and I had no swallow studies. So a lot of people were followed up on and I signed off on like a good bit of my patients, which was nice. Uh, I signing off is kind of a weird concept because you're just like deuces. Um, but it's, it's also good because that means they're going home and that they're doing better. Um, a huge difference of acute care is how fast that we have turnover with our patients versus some of my clinical rotations. I held on to patients like at the skilled nursing facility for multiple weeks. Um, so that was fun. It's nice too, to like after I discharge all these patients that my caseload goes from like, like today I left and there was 11 patients on my caseload. And I think I started the day with like 16. I, I really needed to follow up with a lot of patients the last two days, but I was just slammed with swallow studies and evals. So we did that all today and it's done. Did woohoo. I am going to go run some errands and then I get to go home and hang out with Christina. We're going to Goodwill. I sold some scrubs, so we're going to go to uh, the post office and mail them. And then if I'm motivated, I'm going to REI to do a return, to not purchase anything. Kelly Ann, you will not purchase anything at REI today. So I'm going to make a post-work treat. My friend the other day from CrossFit told me that she makes like a s'mores using rice cakes chocolate chips and marshmallows. And I did it, but honestly it was just too plain on this rice cake. So I realized I either need to get like a caramel or chocolate rice cake, or I thought I would try it with peanut butter on the rice cake, then marshmallows and then s'mores. So what I'm gonna do is also crunchy peanut butter is superior and I'm not measuring my peanut butter, so whoops. I'm going to spread the peanut butter on the rice cake. Okay, so now it's gonna have some flavor. And then I'm gonna take my chocolate chips and put them on the rice cake. And then I'm gonna microwave this. Now, the key to microwaving it is to put a bowl on top of everything to melt the chocolate chips. Okay. 
So I microwaved it for 30 seconds. Oh, and look, you can tell that the chocolate chips are melting. Beautiful. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of marshmallows, oh God. And I'm gonna just, oh, this is way too many marshmallows in one handful. That's, that's great. You're doing great, Kelly. Just gonna throw those away later. Okay, so I got some marshmallows. Ah. Maybe I can use one or two more. Okay, marshmallows. And then top it off maybe with a couple more chocolate chips. Cool. So now I'm gonna put it in the microwave looking like this. Okay, another 30 seconds later, I'm gonna take it off. Oh, okay, well I might have, <laughs> I may have over microwaved it just a little bit, but um, yeah. I feel like it looks unappetizing, but let's do a, that side looks a little bit more pretty. Okay, we're gonna do a taste test. Here goes nothing. <laughs> you know when you try things that are just like too hot, so all you tasted the heat, that was that bite. I need to give this like 30 seconds to chill. Stay tuned. <laughs> all right, I'm going in round two. I can't. It's too hot. I don't know what burnt me, but something just burnt my lips. I'm cleaned up and I washed my hair. And I just want to talk about a difficult case this week of mixed anxiety and dysphagia, where I had a patient who came in with esophagitis, but... And so we had a, a GI was already following her and there was kind of an already GI workup and plan going on to do an EGD or an esophagram with her. Um, but she wasn't eating. She wasn't eating at bedside and she was only asking for thickened liquids. And so I was called in to assess her and she was so anxious to consume even like ice chips that she looked at one ice chip and looked at me and she was like, I'm going to choke. Um, so it was very challenging as an SLP to go in and try to evaluate her swallow bedside and get her eating something because that was a Friday when she got admitted and we needed to have a plan for the weekend until we could take her in for imaging. Um, and something that I didn't particularly learn about in my dysphagia class in grad school was coping with anxiety in dysphagia because we learned about you know, counseling and the SLP's role of counseling, but that was a way towards pediatrics and peds um, and parents. But part of grad school definitely overlooked dealing with anxious, dysphagic patients. And it was huge. It was huge to just encourage her to take what I felt was safe and appropriate for her. And did I want her drinking thick and liquids in the weekend if I thought she was safe on water? Of course not, but I read the room and I read the situation and realized the only way that she would be taking in liquids and eating anything this, that weekend was if it was comfortable for her. And as long as I wasn't suspe suspicious of aspiration or a ton of residue on that, uh, those consistencies that she really wanted, then I agreed for it. So we ended up having a modified diet all weekend and I took her in for a swallow study and her oral pharyngeal swallow was beautiful. No residue, no airway invasion. And it was even more unique as a role as an SLP to show her the biofeedback and show her that her swallow was functional, but that on that esophageal sweep, there was some things that was more concerning. And then I told her that the GI team can see the images and that they're going to follow up with her and work with her this week. But I... I learned a lot about not overlooking anxiety during 
evaluations and really treating an anxious patient with respect and care because although I personally don't struggle with the fear of swallowing or having this globus sensation and burning in my esophagus, like I can't relate to her, but I need to treat her feelings towards swallowing and her approach to swallowing as if, you know, it was a patient at risk for aspiration because that's what she's going through and that she deserves the same amount of respect. I just, it was very shocking to me that after going through this with her, that it was just not a topic covered. Counseling was very overlooked in our adult classes. I think we really only talked about counseling when it comes to like ALS and maybe a little bit of dementia care, but definitely not when it comes to hospital care with your average middle-aged patients. Um, And it really makes me overlook this argument that the medical SLP world versus more of school-based probably should have two separate pathways in grad school. And I think this is one of those arguments for why, because there's so much that I'm learning on the job and that's awesome. But how special would it be better prepared for that from school? So just some food for thought. (laughs) And we're reunited. Don't look at me like that. (laughs) I don't know how to do this. I'm not a camera person. Yay. We're going to dinner. Where are we going to dinner at? Leonardo's. Leonardo's. Not the OG one, but this one. And um, it's going to be good. Hopefully. If it's not, then we'll never go back because Christina's not going to live here anyways anymore. You got to show them what it looks like inside. And we're both wearing green shirts. I didn't do it on purpose. I was wearing green first. I just want to put that out there. I could have worn the same exact one. Should have, would have, could have. Anyways, we always... At the end of every graduate, every graduate, at the end of every semester for grad school, we always go out to dinner together. And so now we're doing it just a, Finally. Couple, just a couple months late. So stay tuned. We'll, we'll, we'll get a full report of dinner and Better I'll show you it. Never. This is true. <laughs> they accidentally made extra rolls. We didn't even order these, but, um, yum. CJ's got her classic unsweet <laughs> Arnold Palmer and I'm drinking a beer like the unhealthy individual I am. Yeah. Check out this old school, old school restaurant. Gotta get this. <laughs> this is the vibe of the night. Dinner in the swamp. Classic Florida, am I right? Alrighty, guys. Look at that deep dish goodness. It's not completely Chicago style, but uh, she thick, and I'll take it. And here's Christina's. <laughs> Nice pepperoni situation we got going down there. And literally, I didn't show you this earlier, but these rolls are literally sitting in oil and they're amazing. I cannot wait to dip my crust in that. Oh yeah. But yeah. You already know I'm drinking out of this cup and hanging out with my bestie. Bestie for the restie until she leaves me forever. No. You're leaving me forever. I'll be back up every time. So we went for a walk and now we are just hanging. We are just hanging. I'm going to go to bed soon. I figured I would end this vlog now because I have a food coma and Christina stopped taking a video of me. I have a food coma and I'm sleepy and I'm happy Christina's here. I missed her so much, but thanks for following me and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.